to do a few uh, questions out of the appendix uh, to account for income tax <clears throat> in net present value. So let's start with 13b1 after tax costs. Solve each of the following parts independently. Number one, Lowney Limited has hired a public accounting firm to identify opportunities to reduce their corporate income tax expense. The firm's tax advisory fee will be $250,000. What will be the after-tax cost of the firm's fee if Lowney's tax rate is 30%? Well, when we have a cash expense that's tax deductible, to figure out what our after-tax cost expense is, we just take 1 minus t. So we are told that our tax rate is 30%, so it's 1 minus 0.3 times our tax deductible expense is $250,000. We will get $175,000. So $75,000 becomes a savings of tax we would normally have paid. So we spent the $250,000, we got value for it, and it really only cost us one seventy-five because seventy-five is financed by a reduction in taxes. Beautiful. Number two, Cycling Accessories has introduced a new line of cold weather apparel, and annual revenues have increased by six hundred thousand. If the company's tax rate is twenty-five percent, what is the after-tax benefit from the increased revenue? Well, it's the same thing. Instead of a, a, a taxable deductible expense, we have a taxable benefit. It's one minus t times the taxable benefit. So our tax rate is 25%, 1 minus 0 0.25, times our 600,000. So 75% 75 of 600,000 uh, will give us 450,000. There we go. Nice and simple, right? The final one, number three. Solar Solutions has purchased new manufacturing equipment that cost $400,000. Calculate the yearly tax savings from the CCA tax shield for the next three years. Assume that the income tax rate is 30%, the CCA rate is 30%, and the weighted average cost of capital is 12%. Assume that CCA in the first year is subject to the half-year rule. Now, this, is, uh, this question causes me some grief because of the way it's worded. It asks us to calculate the yearly tax savings from the CCA tax shield for the next three years. It doesn't ask us to calculate the present value of those savings, but I'm assuming that's what it means. If it's just saying calculate the savings, it would be once we figure out how much tax uh, 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 we would save, we would just add up this column, but since it gives us weighted average cost of capital, I'm assuming it really wants the present value of those savings. It just had a, a typo in, in the question that it didn't actually explicitly say that. But we're going to do all four columns anyways, right? So, 400,000, our CCA is 30%. 30% 30 of 400,000 is 120, but the half-year rule, so we only use 60. 30% uh, uh, of 60,000 is $18,000 in tax savings at the end of the year. Discounted backwards by 12% will give us 16,071 in in tax savings as of today, the present value. Well, we started with 400,000. We've already charged off 60, so we only have 340,000 in our undepreciated capital cost. 30% of that, we don't have to follow the half year rule now. We have 102,000, and 30% of that for our tax would be 30,600. Discounted back two years at 12% will give us 24,394. 102 off the 340 leaves 238 left to depreciate. 30% of 238 gives us 71,400. We save 30% in tax, so we'll save 21,420. At the end of year three, net present value back to today at 12% gives us 15,000. 246. So if we add the, these three numbers up, we get 55,711. That is the net present value of the first three years of tax savings. If, on the other hand, they just wanted this column, we can just simply just do some math here. 49.50, there's 70,000 uh, and $20 uh, in, in this particular case. But I'm pretty sure they're looking for the uh, net present value of that total there is exercise 13b1. Exercise 13b2, after-tax cash flows in net present value analysis. 
Draper Corporation is considering two investment projects, each of which would require a $60,000 initial investment. Cost and cash flow data concerning the two projects are given below, and I've replicated in the top corner of the screen up here. The inventory scanning equipment would have a salvage value of 6,000 in 10 years, which I've written in down here. The equipment would be depreciated over 10 years. At the end of 10 years, the investment in working capital would be released for use elsewhere. So in project B, we see no equipment but working capital. That would be released for use elsewhere. The company requires an after-tax return of 12% on all investments. The tax rate is 30%. So our weighted average cost of capital is 12%. Our tax rate is 30%. Required, compute the net present value of each investment project. Okay, so number, we'll start with A. A is the more complex one. And to help uh, uh, with our thinking, uh, the timeline, I, you know I like to do the timeline. You should get used to doing one. They're really easy to do. We can tell the whole story here. What are we going to do? We're going to buy a piece of equipment for $60,000, and in 10 years it's going to have a salvage value of 6000 There we go. We have net annual cash inflows of 11000 but do we want to put 11000 down? Not really. We have a tax rate of 30%. Remember, we want to model after-tax cash flows, So, which means that we get to keep 70% of this. 70% of 11000 is $7,700. So we will have cash flows each year for 10 years of $7,700. So what are we saying here? We're going to spend 60000 today, which will generate $7,700 a year for 10 years, after which the project is over, and we can salvage the machine for $6,000. Now we have to figure out the net present value of this story. Then remember, step two is, well, what is our tax shield worth? And then we add those two together. So in figuring out this one, well, what can I do? Again, at the very top, I have what looks like an annuity or a bond. My N equals 10, my future value equals 6,000, my payments equals 7,700, and my required rate of return, I'm told, is 12%. All I have to do now is compute my present value. This is if I'm using my calculator, remember. And I will get 45,438. And from this, I only have one outflow for the equipment at time equals zero. I can deduct the 60000 directly from that total, and that will give me negative 14562 So on this basis, I would reject the project. But I have a tax shield. The 60000 down to 60000 this $54,000 provides me with a tax shield. So I have to calculate the value of that tax shield. And you'll recall it's CDT over D plus K times our correction factor for the half year rule, 0.5K over 1 plus K, minus, of course, SDT over D plus K, because that's our salvage value, uh, discounted backwards, 1, point, uh, uh, sorry, 1 plus uh, K to the negative N. So we just have to, we, we know what all of these are. We already have all the values for everything. We just have to plug them in. So C is 60,000. D is 0.2. Our, our, our CCA rate is 0.2. Our tax rate is 0.3 over 0.2 plus uh, 0.12 uh, over 0.32 uh, times uh, 1.06 over 1.12, our correction factor, minus... What are we getting? Six thousand dollars. Point two times point three over point three two times one point one two to the negative ten. Why? Because it's a ten-year project, right? And now we can. Now we're in a position just to solve these. This whole first term turns into ten thousand six hundred and forty-seven minus the value of the second term. If you figure it out, is three hundred and sixty-two which equals $10,285. Therefore, the net present value of project A, I'll just put A in here, is our negative 14,562 plus the advantage of the tax shield, which is 10,285. And well, look at this. We come up short. We still come up short. 
So it's negative 4272 at this point. So on a purely quantitative analysis, uh, we would reject this project. So let's look at project B. I'll try to squeeze it in down here so we don't have to go to another screen. Now project B has an investment of working capital of 60,000, but we're going to release that 60,000 in 10 years. Everything else is the same. So if we look at project A's timeline, let's hijack project A's timeline. We'll still have the negative 60. We'll still have $7,700 a year for 10 years, but instead of 6,000 up here, just throw another zero on. So project B looks like this. So what do we have? We have n equals to 10. We have the same iy equals to 12. Our PMT, our payment equals 7,700. Our future value equals 60,000, not 6,000 this time. Over here we put 6,000, it is 60,000 now. So we have four variables and we just need to compute our present value, which will be 62,825 minus the original 60 that we spent will equal 2825. So we can see that we have two projects, one that requires us to buy equipment and one just that, that, that uh, requires us to increase our working capital. We know we're going to get that back. Turns out the second one is the better value simply because if we invest 60, we know we're going to get back 60. Here we invest 60, we're going to get back something less. We get back 6. Now the 54 in here does have some value, but that 54,000 that has value is only worth 10,285. Nowhere near what 60,000 would be discounted backwards for 10 years. So there we go, project A versus project B, and that's 13B2. Exercise 13B3, net present value analysis including income tax. The hub store at a university in eastern Canada is considering purchasing a self-serve checkout machine similar to those used in many grocery stores and other retail outlets. Currently, the university pays part-time wages to students totaling $55,000 per year. A self-serve checkout machine would reduce part-time student wages by $35,000 per year. The machine would cost $240,000 and have a 10-year useful life. Total cost of operating the checkout machine would be $5,000 per year, including maintenance. Major maintenance would be needed on the machine in five years at a total cost of $10,000. The salvage value of the checkout machine in 10 years would be $40,000. CCA rate is 30%. Management requires a 10% after-tax return on all equipment purchases. The company's tax rate is 30%. So, I have told the story here. And we can see it just in this timeline. We're going to spend $240,000 today. It's going to last 10 years, have a salvage value of $40,000. During those 10 years, it'll generate $30,000 in savings. It says right in the question that it'll save $35,000 per year in wages, but cost $5,000 to operate. So we save $35,000, but spend five, so we'll save $30,000 a year for 10 years. At the end of year five, we will have to spend $10,000 on major maintenance on the equipment. Our weighted average cost of capital is 10%, our CCA rate is 30%, and our tax rate is 30%. This is everything we need to know. Look how nicely. Anybody coming to this, by the way, when you get used to timelines, if anybody drew a timeline like this and you looked at it, you could pretty much tell the story. Oh, okay, I see the, uh, the initial expenditure. I see the salvage value up here. I see the constant cash flows, the main, another outlay over here, and it's a 10-year life. It's nice and simple. I like it. I'm really stressing it, aren't I? What's required here? Number one, determine the before-tax net annual cost savings that the new checkout machine will provide. Well, I already did that, 30000 so just in doing the timeline, I've already answered question number one. Number two, using the data from one above and other data from the exercise, compute the checkout machine's net present value. Would you recommend that the machine be purchased? So the first thing we want to do is convert our timeline into an after-tax cash flow timeline. So let's do that. Let's take our original timeline and redo it to reflect after-tax. Does the 240 change? No, it doesn't. 240,000. Does the 40,000 salvage value change? No, it does not. There's our 10 years. Our five year maintenance, we're spending $10,000. Well, that's deductible. Now, I want to make a point here. 
This $10,000 is not an addition to the machine. In other words, we would not add that to the cost pool, to whatever po asset pool we're using. This is just general maintenance. That's a straight expense. If, on the other hand, this $10,000 was to upgrade the equipment by buying significant parts to add to it, then at that point, you can make a distinction between saying, well, on the one hand, we could charge it against income. That's a conservative way to do it. But on the other hand, we could make an argument that it is a significant addition to the machine, hence it's a contribution to the pool. And we're going to see that in 13.4, where we're going to go the other way with this expense. Right now in this question, let's call it an expense that we can write off in that year. Well, if we write off $10,000 at a tax rate of 30%, we really only have a cash outflow of $7,000. If we're bringing in $30,000 a year, after tax, we got to pay nine grand in tax, we'll only have $21,000, so our cash inflows are $21,000 a year for 10 years. So now we have an after tax cash flow line. We're ready to price this out. So let's price it out in the way that we've learned. The very top of the line we're going to price out as a bond with n equal to 10. Our future value equals 40,000. Our payment equals 21,000. We have 10 payments of 21,000. Our discount rate, our IY on the calculator is 10. Once we hit compute PV, we will get 144,457. So great, we've dealt with that. Now let's deal with this. Let's bring this back to zero, because this is already at zero. So this is at zero. We brought the top of the line back to zero. Now let's bring the bottom of the line back to zero. Well, to do that, that's really simple, right? This is negative 7,000 divided by one point. What's our cost of capital? One zero. And how many years are we bringing it back? Five which will give us negative four, three, four, six. Look at that. So now we're in a position to deal with just step one. Never mind the tax shield, we're just dealing with step one, right? So our initial investment is 240 in the negative. Our present value of our outflows, PV out, the bottom of our timeline, is 43. 46. Present value of our inflows, the top of our line, PV in is 144457. So what do we get? We get 99889. Negative present value on this. So far we want to reject it, but somebody taps us on the shoulder and says, wait a minute, you have the tax shield from the $240,000. You got 240 in, 40 out, so there's 200,000 that we can depreciate over these over these 10 years. There's 200,000. So let's deal with that. So step two, let's find a nice color uh, ink here to use. Step number two is we want to compute the tax shield. And um, I've said it before, I say it again, uh, every time you get to a question and every time you have an opportunity, what you want to do is you want to rewrite the formula every single time because the more you rewrite it, the more it becomes part of, 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 of your long-term memory and the more you can remember it uh, as opposed to saying, okay, what was it now? And as you write it out, uh, argue out what each term is because then you'll get understanding and with understanding there's no need for memorization d plus k and of course we're going to discount it back for the full period of 10 years negative n so there we go so once we have that all we have to do is plug in numbers now right so we have 240,000 0.3 on the cca 0.3 on the tax because they're both 0.3 divided by 0.4 the CCA plus the, the, work, you know, the weighted average cost of capital, times our adjustment factor, which is 1.05 over 1.1. That is the net present value of the full value of 240. But we're selling it for 40, so we have to take off that 40, which is 40,000, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0.3, 0
point three over the same point four. Now I could write this on the side, but I always like say, do, doing this and showing exactly what I'm doing. One point one to the power of ten. I like to put it on the bottom to to do it that way. So my first term uh, will simplify to fifty one five four five. My second term will simplify to thirty four seventy. So the value of my tax shield is forty eight thousand and seventy five. So now I can solve the entire problem, can't I? So let's go ahead and do that. What do we have? The net present value of the full project is the net present value of all the cash flows, 99,889, plus whatever we make on the tax shield, 48,075, will give us negative 51,814. So it looks like those students at that Eastern University will get to keep their jobs and not be outsourced by a scanning machine because the net present value of this is not pleasant.